many horses still in contention. Should we have a look at it? Yes. Let's do that. Right. Take it from the outset. And here we go. Randox Grand National 2024 in its entirety. And the first thing to note is shorter run to the first fence. They can't get ahead of steam up. The second thing to note is middle of the shot, half a white face, Korak Rambler. Well, he pretty much headbutts the first. And that is the most surprising element of the race. He jumped beautifully last year. In all honesty, last year his jumping was outstanding. I think the race IQ data showed that he was 12 to 14 lengths better than the rest of the field. But it was a very unusual mistake yeah. for him. And then he falls when loose at the second, which must have given Skew and Lucinda heart-stopping moments, but thankfully he's OK. Yes, thankfully. It's very uncharacteristic of him. And, I mean, Derek Fox had absolutely no chance at the first there. And then it all settles down into quite a smooth rhythm with Glenn Gooley and a Foxy Jacks up there in the early stages. Eldorado Allen on the right, giving Brendan Powell a good spin for a long way. Look where the winner is already. White cap, around about a seventh on the inside. Careful enough, but just with so much daylight around him. Yeah, and Paul Tannen made the point that after jumping the first couple of fences, he felt that Iron Maximus was careful, which is no bad thing, obviously, at Aintree. Um, but I must admit, watching him through the race, I felt perhaps there were times where he looked like he wasn't travelling that well. He actually looked like he perhaps was just squeezing once or twice just to keep him in contention. But never did Paul Townend ever panic. And I think that was crucial in saving a little bit for the, for the end. Um, Statler is tailed off um, and not really enjoying the game at all. There's always one or two, aren't there, that, that aren't really taking to it. Um, it, it didn't really look as though Mr. Incredible was loving it at the moment either. Back on the inside of the Foynaven fence, Panda Boy's very well back. Noble Yates really taking scant interest. Yeah, he just never really got going but kept plugging away. Um, never really looked like sort of featuring for one reason or another. Watch Glenn Gooley, the leader here at the canal. Ooh, he was lucky there. Mm. Very fortunate. Got in close, caught his back end on the way through. One horse who travelled beautifully, that's... That is Marla Mission getting hampered at the canal turn. Very soon had to come a cropper, but Miss Manella Indo absolutely loved it, didn't he? He travelled and jumped beautifully. I, I think it's fair to say he's probably travelled better in this race than I've seen him in the last two seasons. Loved it. Loved it. Statler's been pulled up now. Glenn Gooley, um, that's Manella Crooner, the outside, the black and white. Foxy Jacks, the inside, then Eldorado Allen. And Coco Beach, the grey, not as prominent as he was last year. Noble Yates, another mistake. He actually jumped the worst of all, just about. You just don't expect that, given, obviously, what we've seen from him. It's whether that's to do with his campaign, perhaps. He's, he's been sort of quite unorthodox campaign for him over hurdles. That was Limerick Lace making a mistake at the back. She actually ran quite well, considering she had a shocking trip on the way round. Yeah, there were a couple who made mistakes but got into it. I mean, she was one. Um, it's funny, C Capadano, I thought, in the red cap in the middle of the field in the J.P. McManus colours, I thought he travelled equally as well as he did last year, but similar to last year, checked out rather tamely at the end. Yeah, he just didn't quite get home. Um, should we pick up David Maxwell? What a, ra what a run in sixth. Um, second from the left here, the red colours with the, the chocolate sleeves, with only about three behind at the moment. I mean, he had a hell of a spin, didn't he? And fair play to him for buying the horse and having a crack at it. He deserved to be there, didn't he? And the, the horse had the form obviously well back last year, so was in there with a chance, and that must have been some thrill towards the end for him. OK, so now you've got two fences to come to the chair, and they really are not going really very slowly by Grand National standards after a circuit here. Yeah, and um, just thinking about that, I was just thinking about Kitty's Light, who is positioned to the outside in the uh, familiar red sleeves. That's one March making a bad mistake. Just thinking he could have probably done with a, a, a stronger pace, Kitty's mm. Light, because I think he prefers running past horses getting there, but he was actually in contention for a long way. He was more forward than I've seen him. OK, and they jumped the 14th, and they got one to jump till the chair. Now, neither Mr Incredible nor Marla Mission had been faultless to this point. They're in similar colours, pale blue colours. If you look to the back, toward the right, second and third from the right, and they both go here at the chair. And the winner's not brilliant here. Paul Townend does very, very well at the chair, because just look at the winner, white cap the inside, then cast your eye back to the fallers. Oof. Very good, Paul Townend. Unfortunately, Marla Mission's made a mistake. There's no chance for horse and rider. 
uh, to keep intact. And Mr. Incredible, similarly in behind, uh, their races are over. Um, but again, so many in close contention. And in fact, I, mean, I said faller, that's, that's not right. There were no fallers. There were three unseats and no fallers at all, which is it's remarkable. That is remarkable when you consider the fact that for the last, especially last year's Grand National, was such a brutal race when you watch back at it. But only the first two fences. But only the first two fences. But here, because I think of the approach, again, going back to the way that all the jockeys seem to have it in their minds before they set out, before the start, to be more considered in their approach, I think it paid off in the end. And Caelan Quinn has joined us. First ride in the Grand National on Nassalam, who at the moment, as we pick it up out onto the second circuit, is in quite a nice position, Caelan, sort of about seventh or eighth. The, the white colours there, yeah, there we've got you. Um, and at this point, what were you thinking? Uh, I was happy enough at this stage. Um, you know, he jumped so well the whole way. Um, probably in the end, just the weights caught him out. Um, but no, I, I still think he's run a good race. We were just talking about how it, it seemed to be a sort of steadier, more stately Grand National than we're used to. I probably didn't feel like that to ride in. How, how was it for you, your first experience? Uh, for first experience, it was pretty good. Um, I, I, to be honest, I couldn't believe how much space there was. Um, obviously, the, the less amount of runners this year, there was um, just a bit more space, but um, it was a good first experience anyway. I mean, it, it's interesting, because there were 32 rather than 40. You'd think, well, it's going to make a bit of a difference, but maybe not that much difference. To what extent do you think that was because the jockeys were using, you were all using the width of the track? That's Mac Totty being pulled up there. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, you know, you, you would think there's still 32 horses that it's a lot, but there is quite a lot of room still um, because the, you know the track's so wide and every, everyone likes to have a bit of space, so everyone was using um, all of the track. Um, and you're still going okay here. Just lost lost your pitch a little bit, but still still going okay. More down toward the the inside as we come to Foynaven. Yeah, um, you know the plan was to originally line up down the middle um, just so he had that bit of room early but um, he does go a bit left at his jump so through the race I naturally knew I would you know, end up towards the inner. Um, this is the canal turn second time. All streaming over it. Panda Boy in rear. That's Farouk Delane out the back about to be pulled up. Panda Boy didn't really figure did he Rishi? No, it, disappointing I felt. Um, one of the horses who just got in behind and never got into a rhythm. And if you think about the horses that played a part in the race, those were the ones that travelled really comfortably. One interesting thing, I, <laughs> I wonder if Angus McNair is watching, because he's the one who always talks to me when we talk about analysing races and how they travel. And I know you're talking about how much space there is, Caelan, and you want everyone to spread out across the track. But it is interesting that Iron Maximus, Delta Work, uh, ran down the inside rail. Manella Indo was never far off the inside rail. Uh, I'm not saying it's, but if you look at where Kitty's Light, for example, late night pass, they were all out and wide on the outside, and it's a left turning track. Um, it maybe does play a part in it if you want to save a little bit of ground being down on the rail. Yeah, um, you know, obviously down the inner is the shortest way, um, but on the track when you walk around, the, the fences are slightly bigger on the inner. Still, they are yeah, still slightly bigger yeah, on the inner, aren't they? Even at Beechers, the ground slightly falls away more on the left. Um, which, if you're confident in your horse's jumping ability, that's, you're confident of going down the inner. Um, but obviously, it was my first, uh, my lad's first time in the race, same as Kitty's Light and um, Late Night Pass. Um, so, down the middle, the fences, I think, are a bit more easier to jump. Mm. But if you, if you looked at where Rachel Blackmore, um, Paul Townend, um, uh, and the riders of, uh, of Galvin and, and Delta Work were, um, Jack Kennedy and Sam Ewing, all four of those were placed toward the inside throughout. Yeah, exactly. And um, Manila Ender actually looked as if he might go and win at this point, I thought. I Maximus was already off the bridle. Now, the one thing that a lot of people noted to me yesterday, Caelan, was the fact that once the spruce had been knocked off the first circuit, the second circuit, the, the cause really almost took no jumping at, at all. Did you feel that, that that spruce was packed in any way differently to how it was when you rode around here the first time? Um, 
No, I didn't see them much difference in them. Um, you know, obviously, second time in, they can't get all the birds back on. That's sure. So they're slightly a bit smaller, but um, there wasn't a lot of difference, I didn't know. And does it... Do, do horses get accustomed quite quickly to what they can get away with? I if if they can brush through quite a bit, of, a bit of the top, will they then get a bit lower, or are they still are they still respecting the height of the fences? Um, some of them do. Um, they, they still respect them. You know, they're obviously quite different to normal fences, so they do still have a look at them. Um, but they do get used to them, and maybe that's why some horses get unseated because they think they take too much of a chance mm -hmm. of getting too low. Um, for instance, like Cork Rambler at the first, um, he probably took a bit more of a chance. He, he was very low at it and just you know stumbled on the landing. Um, but yeah, they, they do still have a look at them. Did you realise it was him that had... Yeah, he was, he, he, he was quite near you, he, wasn't he? He was beside me, yeah, yeah. yeah. What were you thinking when you saw, well, I thought, when you saw him go? I thought it would increase my chances a bit more, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I didn't, didn't plan out that way. Did you go into yesterday feeling any kind of confidence or were you thinking, like Gary was, as he said to me earlier in the week, he's got £10 too much? I, di I did know we had a lot of weight, um, but I was still very confident that you know, he'd be able to jump and travel around there. Um, and then when I walked the track, any, any bit of hope sort of went. It was dried out too much for him. Um, but it was a great first experience for him. Um, you know, I, I'm sure we'll, we'll train him for it next year, and hopefully he can have a better crack at it next year. But um, and, and you could almost have done with it with a red marauder type year, couldn't you? You could have almost done with the with the heavens opening all week and it being as sopping wet as it could possibly yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, that would have been ideal. Um, we thought we thought we were going to get, you know, pro yeah. proper soft ground, maybe not heavy, but we thought it would be soft. Um, what did it feel like? It was just very dead and tacky. Um, you know, it was probably good to soft and most of it, and then, um, you know, from Beechers to Valentine's, where it, they were describing heavy during the week. It was probably just soft, but it was real tacky ground uh, around you know that area. Um, so it did dry out quite a bit. All right. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about you and your season so far. Um, what has been, what might have been, what's to come in a little while. But let's first of all hear from uh, yesterday's winning connections, because after the race, Lydia caught up with Paul Townend and first of all, Willie Mullins. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.